Let's all be totally honest here from the beginning and say that we didn't expect to be having this conversation this year. But Cristiano Ronaldo leaving Manchester United and Man United replacing him would just accelerate this conversation by one year. Ronaldo would have been going next year, I think anyway. So this is just 12 months earlier than we thought it would be. It's not a conversation that Ten Hag thought he'd be needing to have. But who could replace Cristiano Ronaldo? It's a big question on the lips of a lot of United fans right now. Because I don't think he's going to be staying at this point. Happy to be proven wrong? Well, actually, no, I probably wouldn't be happy. I think Ronaldo at this point, I'd prefer him to leave, but I'll do a separate video on that. In this video, I'm going to run through a ton of options that we could technically be looking at for replacing Ronaldo. And I want to know what you think in the comments below, because this is definitely going to be a video where so many people have different opinions. And I'd be really interested to see what's the most popular one. So you let me know in the comments below. And if you do enjoy this video by the end of it, please, if you would consider subscribing to United People's TV, I'll try and put as much research and as much quality into these videos as possible. So it'd be great if you supported it and dropped a like on the video as well. But look, Ronaldo's missed training, pre-season training for the second day in a row because of family reasons. I hope him and his family are well. But the timing of it, it doesn't sit well with me, this whole asking to leave Manchester United. And the first thing to understand about this Ronaldo situation and strikers available in the market is this. There were three, I would say, elite goal scorers available in the transfer market this summer. Number one was Erling Haaland. And he's now gone to Manchester City. And we know about that. Number two was Darwin Nunez. And we all know what's happened there. He has gone to Liverpool. And number three... I would say was Christopher Nkunku, who has since signed a contract extension at RB Leipzig. So of the three choices that would have been available to Manchester United, had Ronaldo let us know about what he wanted to do earlier in the summer, we may have been able to address it this summer. I don't think we can properly address it this summer. And this is the thing. And this is the thing I want to ask you before I run through all the options. Two choices here. Number one, do you want Manchester United to sign a replacement for Ronaldo this season so we have a striker? Or number two... Would you rather that Ten Hag waited a year to identify the exact striker he wants and goes after him next summer and then we cope without Ronaldo? They're the two options. I want you to let me know in the comments below. But what? let me, let me just run through a list of options that we could technically look at. Because the list is quite long. You could look at Sasia Kaladzic. Now, not many of you will know who he is. I'll be honest, I don't particularly know who he is either. But I know that he's been lined up as the Darwin Nunez replacement by Benfica. If you take a look at his stats, I mean, it's obvious where his strengths are. He's a bloody massive bloke. What is he? Two, yeah, two meters tall. He's lined up as a potential replacement for Darwin Nunez. Great in the air. Far more of a target man. Not really the sort of pressing individual that we would maybe look for inside this system. Ah, oh, this stupid. These windows like to like re... Just, uh, they keep refreshing themselves. Stupid. What a bad website. Sofa score. I love your content. Fix your website. Why does it keep refreshing instead of just staying on it? Anyway, Sasa Kaladzic. I'm going to close all the sofa score windows now because that's just going to annoy me. Let me get rid of all of those for you so that doesn't happen again. As I said, I'm a bit particular. I like it to look nice. But Sasa Kaladzic, he's going to be number one. Not number one on that list, but the first name on the list, right? And there's plenty of other names on this list as well. Jean Lucas Scamacca is definitely one that I think a lot of United fans will be talking about because we were talking about him before. Before we were even really, not before we were talking about Darwin Nunes, but in the same conversation as Darwin Nunes, we were talking about Skamaka. Plays Sassuolo, clearly a top class striker. Only 23, got lots of progression to still come in his game. Really impressive return last year for Sassuolo inside Serie A. And there's no doubt that a big club at some point will snap him up. So maybe that should be Manchester United this summer. I think that one, you can probably add to the realistic pile. Would probably still cost in the region of 40 to 50. Probably realistic. One I would probably put in the outside that realistic box is Patrick Schick. I think he's just signed a contract to extension. Of, well, he's got a contract until 2027. The odds are he did just sign a new contract. And of all the goal scorers down here, he's probably one of the elite ones that are left. Look at that. The top one percentile for non-penalty goals, non-penalty expected assists, non-penalty expected goals and assists. And clearances. Very good at that as well. Patrick Schick. Again, all of these... A big dudes, 191, 1 meter 95, and 2 meters tall. They're all target men per se. Not particularly the sort of attacker that you would necessarily associate with Eric Ten Hag, although he had Sebastian Haller last year, so showed that he can use a target man in his system. That's why we all felt, thought and felt that Ronaldo could work there. Now, Victor Osimhen is another one that's going to be named, but for me, it's just not... Look, he's going to cost 60, 70, 80 maybe million, there's no doubt he's a great striker. 23 years old, 
whole career ahead of him, doing bits in Serie A. I don't think there's any chance of Victor Osman. But again, if we're looking at potential replacements, it would be rude of me not to mention his name. Same vein can go for Jonathan David, who's a little bit of a different player compared to the rest. Somebody who would, pro who would far suit this pressing system and the idea of it compared to the likes of Patrick Schick, of Gianluca Scamacca, of Sasa Kalacic. Victor Osman certainly would, for sure. But Jonathan David is another one. Absolutely. Now, that, that's quite a few options so far, right? And if I'm being completely honest, I think we're probably outpriced on Jonathan David. I think we're outpriced on Victor Osman. I think we're outpriced on Patrick Schick. Gianluca Scamacca or Sasa Kalacic, I think, would, too, would be two considered options. But I don't think Manchester United, if we do sign a replacement for Ronaldo this summer, I can't imagine we're going to spend more than like 30 to 40 million. Because it will be a signing that we've made not without like doing our due diligence, if you want to call it that. And we've made big errors with that before. We can't do that in signing the right Ronaldo replacement. So maybe we'll try and go someone younger. Someone like Benjamin Sesko plays for RB Salzburg, a real talent. 19, he's the sort of signings that we will hopefully be making in the future. The sort of signings that haven't quite made it and cut it through to the top level yet, but that will do if given the right coaching. Maybe he could be someone that could be brought in and we could obviously get him relatively cheap. But speaking of cheap, we all know that there's probably going to be two names on the lips of a lot of United fans when it comes to signings that Eric Ten Hag could make to replace Ronaldo. And you can't not talk about Paolo Dybala. As much as I personally think this is, a, this is a transfer Manchester United should have avoided with a barge pole prior to Ronaldo leaving, you can't argue against his numbers. He is a very, very impressive footballer. He really is. I don't know whether he's like agreed anything with Inter Milan or anything right now, but I kind of presume he would stay in Italy. But I don't know. But Paolo Dybala, what do you think about him? There's no doubt he's a top talent. There's also no doubt that it's probably the wrong sort of signing for Manchester United to make as part of a rebuild. That would be a, not a signing for the sake of it, but a signing because, oh shit, we're losing Ronaldo. Let's go and get Dybala. It would strike me as that sort of signing. Now, of all the free transfers that could have happened this summer, I actually identified Andrea Bellotti as a potential who could be a decent backup for Ronaldo. Now, according to the latest reports, it looks like he might be on his way to Monaco. So this might just be a mute conversation. But Andrea Bellotti, maybe that's someone that we should be considering. Not because I think he'd be an incredible signing, but because of what I said earlier. Manchester United and Eric Ten Hag have two options here, if or when Ronaldo leaves now. Number one, we replace him with somebody in the region of 20 to 40, maybe with a view of then bringing in a proper Ronaldo replacement next year. Or, actually three options then. Number two, we go all out and we do sign a player like, I don't know, Patrick Schick and we spend 70, 80 million on him. Victor Osman, 70, 80 million. Jonathan David, 40 to 60 million. Which I do not think we will do. And that's why I think the idea of Andre Bellotti should probably be considered. I don't think it's going to happen because I think it's going to Monaco. But why Dybala's name will now come up again. But one thing you've really, really got to consider through all of this is there is a real chance that Ronaldo leaves this football club and Manchester United do not sign anyone. Now, what will that mean? Let me get their names. I oh, know he's on, he's on the bench up there. Let me get Martial down here too. Martial and Rashford. What would that mean for them this season, right? I think there's a real genuine chance of this happening. If Ronaldo leaves, that Manchester United do not replace him and that we see a false nine system being brought into Manchester United. Whether that's Ericsson there or McTominay, I don't really know. Let's have a look there. Oh, I've got the one, two, four, five, six, seven. Oh, I did get it wrong. I didn't even put him on the pitch. You could see something more along the lines of this. I think I've got my numbers right. Three, three. Yeah, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Good. I've got that right. I've done, oh, my God, I can't count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yeah. Get in. I did get it right. I thought I was right. So we could see a false nine system. Now, I'm not saying that this is Bruno Fernandes' best position because it definitely isn't. But if you looked at what really worked for Eric Ten Hag in that 2018-19 Ajax team, this wasn't Bruno. This was Tadic. This wasn't Ericsson. This was Donny van der Beek. And what worked really well there was that whenever Tadic operated in that role there, 
Whenever he dropped back or dropped deep, Van der Beek would run straight into the space that he left. They worked vertically together. They covered the spaces that the other one left. And it worked. Ajax got to the semi-final of the Champions League for sure. And if we're looking at strengths of depth in this team, probably number 10 is where we're looking the best. We've got Bruno, we've got Van der Beek, and we've got Eriksen down here on the bench as well, who could easily operate inside that role too. So I think it's worth considering that maybe Manchester United wouldn't actually sign a Ronaldo replacement and that Eric Ten Hag would adopt a more of a false nine system like he did with Ajax in 2018-19. And maybe you'd see Bruno play up there. Maybe you'd see Rashford play there. Maybe you'd see Martial play there. But we'd have options inside this role because you've got Eriksen, Bruno and Van der Beek who could all play there. And I suppose you would then be relying on Rashford or Martial. If I'm looking at who should naturally be better at that, probably Martial. He's a bit more of an all-rounded footballer. But it's an option. I'm not saying it's the best option. But if we're looking at replacing Ronaldo, this is an option that I think we have to have a conversation about. But I've ran through there, as I said, there were three elite goal scorers available this summer. We didn't get any of them, right? And Kunku, Nunes, and Haaland. And therefore, we could be, ta we could be taking a look at Kaladzic, Gamaka, Gick, Osserman, Jonathan David, Benjamin Sesko, Paolo Dybala, Andrea Bellotti. There's a ton of names. And I'm not sure which one's correct or what the right thing to do is. So you can let me know what you think in the comments below. But United... If we're going to replace Ronaldo this summer, what do we do? How do we do it? And what is the right option? Because I think, even if you don't like the idea, we have to have a conversation that maybe Ten Hag won't replace him at all. and We'll replace him from within with a change of footballing style. Something worth considering. You let me know what you think in the comments below. Make sure you drop a like on the video as well. And subscribe to United People's TV if you did enjoy it. Take it easy.